Today, I want to discuss the seven warning signs of a zinc deficiency that has the potential to make your life a living hell. Now, we're going to go through all of these, but I will say number seven is the most deadly and it's the most common. The reason I'm doing a video on zinc is because zinc is the third most important nutrient. Number one being vitamin D. Why? Because vitamin D is involved in 2,500 genes. Number two is magnesium. Why? Because it's involved in 300 different enzymes. And zinc is number three because it's involved with over 200 different enzymes. That's a lot of biochemistry. Zinc allows you to make glutathione, which is the most powerful antioxidant. Zinc is highly concentrated in your prostate. It helps you make sperm and testosterone. Zinc is also in your pancreas, the specific part that makes insulin. Zinc is even in your brain in a very specific part that is like a relay switch to your memories. It's called the hippocampus. So when your hippocampus goes down, you get dementia. Then you also have zinc's involvement in wound healing, decreasing gastritis, helping you make collagen, and even helping you grow your hair. But now let's get into the symptoms that can make your life a living hell. Night blindness is one big indication of a zinc deficiency. And if you ever drove at night when it's dark out and you can't see, it's extremely scary and dangerous. All right, number two, low testosterone. In fact, you can even get something called hypogonadism, where your testicles are shrunk. Now, if you're female, you're going to notice your estrogen and progesterone are going to be excessively low. And if you're female going through menopause, you need those hormones to be a lot higher. And if they're not, your life can be a living hell. As far as cortisol goes, what happens, the cortisol goes down because someone's deficient in zinc, and then that sends a signal back up to the brain. And then the brain causes the adrenal glands to overcompensate. So then you make more cortisol because you don't have enough zinc. So guess what? You're going to have more stress. All right, that was number two. Number three is diarrhea. And if you've ever had chronic diarrhea, your life will be a living hell. A lot of children who consume a lot of cereal and grains in poor countries develop diarrhea because of a zinc deficiency because these grains have something called phytic acid that blocks the absorption of zinc. Number four is acne. I had really bad acne in high school. And that was very unfortunate because it really affected my self-esteem. I had one interest in high school that was girls, but I had acne. So that was a big barrier. No confidence. Your skin is highly influenced by zinc. Number five is alopecia. You actually lose hair. If you combine acne with hair loss, that would be a life of living hell. Zinc is so important in helping the growth of the root of the hair, also making the hair thick, and also to support the elasticity of the entire hair. All right, number six is the need for cataract surgery because a lack of zinc can cause cataracts, which is terrible because your lens of your eye starts becoming opaque and you just can't see. You just like, everything is like white. So personally, I don't want cataracts. And number two, I don't want surgery on my eyes. All right, now comes number seven. So you might want to be sitting down for this one because this one is extremely important. Maybe you're not ready for this. Maybe I should cover this in the next video. No, I'm just kidding. I'll tell you what it is. The thymus gland, which is the master immune gland, which sits on top of the heart, shrinks. But what's fascinating is it starts shrinking right after puberty. Check this out. You have a very healthy thymus gland, right? You have all that gland right there. And then at age 25, it's already down to this level. Now, the rest of this is just fat. And then look at it at 50 years old, significantly less thymus gland, thus less immune system. And then at 70, you just have traces of this thymus gland. So you have maybe just a little bit of residue left to be able to fight infections. The thymus is the most important immune gland. It makes T cells. Now, I'm sure you've probably heard of T cells, but the letter T stands for thymus because they originate from the thymus gland. And these T cells control and coordinate every aspect of your immune system. If you instantly just take an antibiotic for every infection and an aspirin to reduce the fever, you weaken the immune system. I would just let it go through its cycle. I wouldn't try to suppress it. If it gets over 104, Okay, good. Check with your doctor. But that fever really is part of your immune defenses and it's there to cook the viruses and bacteria. But the T cells are not just about infection. They're also about killing cancer and preventing autoimmune diseases. So if there's immune cells, they're not able to differentiate. In other words, they're not able to tell the difference between 
your cell and a bad guy or a pathogen, then your immune system kills them, gets rid of them, because we don't want to have a self-attack. And that's what happens in autoimmune diseases. A researcher, Professor Greg Fay, who has some mind-blowing research I want to share with you. His whole thing is about anti-aging, and he basically, is, all of his work is designed to help restore and regenerate this atrophied thymus gland. So if you can actually regenerate the thymus gland, you can literally increase lifespan because you're going to decrease the risk of getting cancer and infections. So in his study, he gave patients growth hormone, also metformin and DHEA to prevent the side effect of growth hormone, which is diabetes. The growth hormone actually stimulated the growth of the thymus and a 20% increase in VO2 max. I mean, VO2 max is your maximum lung capacity, your ability to use oxygen, which a high level usually relates to an athlete but the subjects that went through his program didn't do a lot of extra exercise. He was one of the first people to reverse this biological clock. So this is fascinating information. I was really excited about it. I started to look into the research on animal studies, and I found some additional information I want to share with you. In this one study, a rat study, they transplanted a thymus from a younger rat into this older rat, and there was remarkable regeneration and aging. It was just quite mind-blowing. The rat lived a lot longer with regrowth of the organ. Okay, now I want to show you two amazing studies involving giving zinc to mice. A full recovery of the thymus function with regrowing of the organ and a partial improvement in the immune system as measured by natural killer cells. So we're increasing these natural killer cells that basically kill viruses and they kill cancer. Let me just quickly cover what causes a zinc deficiency. Number one, getting older. Number two, having gut issues. Number three, not consuming animal products, alcohol, sugar, chronic stress, and certain medications. Zinc also has to be balanced out with copper. And anytime you take zinc, I recommend taking also with copper at a ratio of 10 to 1. 10 times as much zinc as copper. I would recommend one more thing, and that would be a thymus extract. But when I buy supplements, I do look at reviews, and it's quite fascinating. People are improving their histamine levels, decreasing allergies. Some people claim that their hair is getting darker because in the study that Dr. Greg Fay did, he also found a smaller group of people started noticing darker hair. You don't want to have premature shrinkage of your thymus gland. You want to extend that as long as possible. And even though studies were done in mice, you know, it, it might help humans as well. No claims here. So you're going to have to try it yourself. No guarantees. And if you want a little bit more information about zinc, you should check out this additional video I have, which is fascinating.